Welcome, hello, my name is Andrzej and this is another video of the series SAP EWM Needs Automation where we discover SAP EWM MFS, another video created together with the EWM team at SwissLog. With this video that I should have been uh, creating much earlier, I answer the question, what is SAP EWM actually? Uh, the question was raised a couple of times during the last months and I didn't think about publishing this earlier as I thought it would be kind of clear to, to all of you, but there is a good amount of people who have no experience at all with EWM MFS. So I'll put this rather short introduction video now in between the more complex one that I released during the last months and also uh, that I plan for the next months. So I'm catching up a little bit, explaining details, so no, no coding this time, but rather general understanding what is EWM MFS actually. Yeah, so we Mm, you can expect a rather simple question, so basically exchanging, let's say, five to ten minutes of your lifetime and getting a, a compact and simple answer to this complex question, let's say. Now, where do we start with? Uh, I came up with my, my own definition, what I thought would be understandable for you also. And technically, I think EWM MFS is a package of code sitting in SAP EWM, which enables EWM to talk directly with different kind of automation equipment. So let us break down these three main characteristics. Yeah, the package of code, the term talk directly and automation equipment. And we start with the last one. So what kind of automation equipment are we actually talking about or what is automation equipment in the context of warehouse management for the ones who have used only manual operated warehouses so far. Just a quick introduction, just some examples. Usually we are talking about different kinds of conveyors here because those conveyors are used to move stuff from A to B. Uh, I know there are different, more complex uh, types of let's say robots, AGVs and so on, but let's start simple here. Usually we have conveyors moving cases, cartons or pallets from A to B horizontally. And then we have machines for vertical movements, usually cranes op operating ASRS, automated storage and retrieval systems. There's some examples here, just moving pallets picking up the pellets and storing it in a highway where no human is touching the bins anymore. Another option is monorails, like this example here, picking up pellets from A, position A, and dropping it at another place in the warehouse at position B. And just, just some examples for automation equipment. And as I said in the beginning, EWM, is now able to talk with this automation equipment via the MFS component. Uh, but this is only one part. So let's go to the next one, which is a package of code, which is also needed in order to enable this. And this package of code is basically the one that we see here as SCWM MFS. And that was, or that is part of EWM since release 5.1, so roughly since 2008. And with this package of code in EWM, uh, it was no longer required to install any kind of additional middleware or warehouse control units in between the EWM system and the subsystem in order to talk to this kind of automation equipment that I showed you before. First of all, this package of code is not only this package of code, but in addition to this, the master and application data, which is used by this package of code and sitting here in the MFS folder in the easy access menu. And in addition to this, we have customizing, which is controlling the MFS processes and the code. And this customizing is sitting here under the EWM node and customizing with its own MFS node 
and a couple of subnodes, which I will not look into detail here right now. So we have automation equipment on the on the one side, and we have the code in EWM, and this then sums up to a possibility for EWM to talk directly. I will explain this talk directly term and along with the VDI standard 3962, which is a layer model of the automation stack in, in a warehouse. And we see that EWM as our warehouse management system is talking to the inventory management system on the one side, so that could be our ERP system handling deliveries, orders, and so on, and they are exchanging like information about uh, like those delivery items. Now the, the IM system, so inventory management system, gives requests to the warehouse management system, the management system executes. Uh, so in, this is only managing orders and deliveries, and EWM is our WMS is managing stock for HU, managing stock on each bin and creates a task to move stuff from A to B. And now we have the requirement to talk to a subsystem, which is not directly the automation equipment that you saw on the first slides here in this video, but rather a PLC in between which controls the automation equipment. Now I don't want to go into detail here about the role of the PLC. Now there's another video, I will link it here. But just keep in mind the PLC controls the automation equipment, but EWM somehow needs to talk to the PLC. And before we had MFS in EWM, we needed an additional middleware here on this layer, which covered the task of the material flow control. So basically converting tasks from EWM into tasks for the subsystem, speaking a language that the automation equipment and the PLC could understand. And now with MFS and EWM, we basically have this layer here also integrated in the warehouse management system. Uh, so at the end, we have those within one, so EWM plus EWM MFS. And with this, within EWM, we are now able to talk directly to the PLC, so to the automation equipment out of EWM MFS. And that's a uh, main difference and, difference and the main feature of the MFS component. Uh, so, um, if, if I say talking, perhaps just one last point here for this video, just to, to complete the cycle here. If I, if I say talking, I'm basically saying that EWM MFS is able to create telegrams which can be sent and interpreted to, respectively, by the PLC. And talking in this term, just refers to telegram communication. But this again is another topic which I also covered in a different video, so I will link it here. So if you are interested in discovering and learning about the details of telegram communication, I would highly recommend that video for you as the next one. For this one here, we are already done. As I promised, it's going to be a rather short video. To sum it up, yeah, we have a package of code in EWM, and this package of code is enabling EWM to talk directly via telegrams with the PLC, which in turn controls the automation equipment. And the other way around, the PLC sends messages to EWM, and EWM MFS component is able to understand and process those telegrams and messages and trigger follow-up actions within EWM. Yeah, that's all based on this package of code which was introduced and is now part of EWM standard and called MFS module or MFS component. Yeah, and as I said before, there are already multiple other videos in this video series that would help you dig deeper into different topics and areas that I touched on with this video. For instance, the uh, role of the PLC as such. Uh, I didn't explain the, the, the term at all right now. I just told you that it controls the automation equipment. But what is this programmable logic controller actually doing here in the context of EWM MFS? And how is EWM actually talking to the PLC and the other way around? So there are communication protocols, approaches, and I have a very detailed uh, video on that part, which I will also link in the video description. 
And along with this, I will also give you some links how you can access the uh, website of the Swisslog EWM team. So in case you need further details about what they are doing, you want to make use of their services, or in case you want to browse for open positions within their EWM team. Having said that, I hope you could learn something with this video. I'm very happy if you would subscribe to the channel so that you would be notified once I release the next video. Or if you check out my website, have a look at the blog posts, feel free to make use of the material, use of the pictures and all this stuff. And I hope that I will see you back here for the next video. Until then, I wish you a happy learning.